Hi, Algebra 2. This is Unit 6, Lesson 8, and today we're going to talk about completing the square, which is something you did back in Algebra, and shifting parabolas. So a parabola looks like this. Okay, this is U-shaped, and the simplest quadratic parabola is y equals x squared, so that's the one that's sketched right here. The vertex, that's the turning point of the parabola, is going to be 0, 0. And just a reminder, this line, like right straight down the middle, dividing that parabola in half, is called the axis of symmetry. And we can shift this um, parabola, or we're really shifting the vertex. So we can shift that by this equation right here, y equals x minus h squared plus k. So this is something that we've already talked about before when we had our absolute value graphs, and that the h, so that number right there represents a horizontal shift. A negative h means that I'm shifting to the right. A positive h means I'm shifting to the left. Okay, And the k represents a vertical shift, so that would be up down. A negative k shifts down, so that's a normal and a positive k shifts up. All right, so the, the vertical shift, negative shifts down, positive shifts up, that, that seems like it should be, but remember the vertical, the horizontal shift, a negative goes to the right, which is the opposite of what you'd expect, and a positive shifts to the left. Now this right here is called vertex form of a quadratic, okay, because the h and the k are going to represent the vertex of it. So most quadratics are in standard form, okay, and that's the one that looks like this, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and what we're going to do is, whoops, we're going to move things around and shift things around so that I get it into vertex form, because that's the one that I can identify that vertex and I can easily graph it or see the transformation that took place. So how do I get something that's in standard form into vertex form, I do that by completing the square, and that's something that you guys learned back in algebra. So just a review of how do I complete the square. Basically, we get all the x terms on one side, and everything else is on the other side. I'm actually not going to move stuff to the other side. I'm just going to leave it where it is, but you want to get all your x terms together. All right, make sure that you have a 1x squared, that there's no coefficient in front of that x squared. If there is, you're going to have to factor it out. And basically, you take half of the b term. Okay, the b term is the number that's in front of that x. You take half of it and square it. That gets added onto both sides of the equation. Remember, though, if you have a coefficient in front of that x squared, that when you move it to the other side, you're actually multiplying by that amount as well. Then you factor the x side of your equation, all right, and then you get y alone. All right, let's look at one. But there are the um, directions of how to do it. So if we flip over the page, I have the function y equals x squared. It's already graphed there for us. And now we're going to look at this equation, y equals x squared minus 18x, 8x plus 18. So we're going to complete the square so that I make it look like this in vertex form. So here's what I do. I have the x squared minus 8x, okay? The 18, I'm not going to actually move it over to the other side. I'm sort of just going to leave it here, but I'm going to leave a gap right there. All right, and then on the other side, I have zero. That was where my y was. So now here's what I do. I take half of negative eight, half of negative eight is negative four, and I square it. Negative four squared is 16. So basically, I'm adding on 16 to the left, and I'm gonna have to add on 16 to the right. Now this right here is a trinomial that factors to x minus four, x minus four. I'm not going to write it like that, though. I'm going to write it as x minus 4 squared. Okay, and then the 18 is hanging out. And, whoops, that's 18. The 18 is hanging out, and the 16 is on the other side. And now I'm going to bring this 16 back to the left, so it's going to be x minus 4 squared plus 2, because I'm going to subtract 16, equals y. 
So now I have it in my um, my vertex form. Describe how the graph of y equals x squared would be shifted to produce this graph. So now this graph actually looks like this. Okay, I have it in vertex form. The 4 is going to shift it to the right. So I'm shifting it 4 to the right. And I'm shifting it 2 up. So my vertex, which is 0, 0, is now going to be here at 4, 2. All right, so I want to sketch that graph. And basically every single point is moved 4 to the right and 2 up. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right and 2 up. And this one, one, two, three, four to the right, and two up. So my new graph looks like this. All right, so see how easy it is to graph that. So I sketched my new graph by using that vertex form, and I wanna know the coordinates of that turning point, of that vertex right there. So the coordinates of my turning point are right here at four, two. So instead of my vertex being 0, 0, my vertex is now 4, 2. And where did I get those points from? I'm just going to highlight this. Those points were gotten right from here when I put it into vertex form. Okay? All right, so let's look at exercise 2. So using our calculator in the window shown below, we want to sketch the graph of the quadratics y equals x squared. So put that into your calculator y equals 3x squared, and y equals 1 half x squared. So you can see what I'm doing each time is that I'm changing that coefficient in front just to see what happens to my graph. So if you put all of those in your calculator, you're going to see that they all have a vertex of 0, 0. Okay, so y equals x squared will look something like this. And again, I'm just sketching these. It goes through 0, 0. Okay, so that's y <coughs> equals x squared. And then I'm going to have y equals 3x squared. And that one's going to get a little narrower. So y equals 3x squared Okay, is going to look still go through 0, 0. Let me do that one in a different color. So y equals 3x squared, I'll have to label these, still goes through 0, 0, but it's a narrower quadratic, so this is y equals 3x squared. And the other one was, this was my regular graph, y equals x squared. And then I'll do y equals 1 half x squared, gets wider, but it still goes through 0, 0. Every quadratic that has the form y equals ax squared has a turning point at 0, 0. Okay? All right, so let's take some of the, practice taking some of these quadratics and putting them into vertex form. There's going to be a coefficient in front of that x squared, which is going to make it a little bit trickier to do. All right, so here's what we have. I have this 3x squared plus 12x, okay? I'm going to factor out a 3, so I'm left with x squared plus 4x. The negative 2 is hanging out, all right? And on this side, I just have basically y, which is just nothing. I have 0 on that side. So, oops, I didn't want my parentheses, though, to be closed right there. Okay, so... I have to look at this and I have to say to myself, though, what do I need to add? So I take half of b squared, which is 2, and then I square that. So basically, I'm going to add on 4 to this side, which means I need to add on 4 to this side. But I'm not really adding on 4 because look at the 3 in front. That 3 is multiplied by the 4. So I need to multiply the, by that, that 4 on the left also by 3, which really gives me 12. Now the x squared plus 4x plus 4, the factors are x plus 2 and x plus 2, but I write it in vertex form as x plus 2 squared. And then I'm just going to take that 12 and move it back over to the right. So I'm going to have 3, x plus 2 squared. I'm subtracting 12, so that will give me negative 14. 
So now these numbers right here give me my, um, my vertex, give me that turning point. So it's going to be negative 2, negative 14. Because remember that, that H, that horizontal shift, has the opposite, it goes in the opposite direction of what you would expect. All right, because a positive 2 right there shifts it to the left 2. So my vertex or my turning point is negative 2, negative 14. All right. Um, let's try another one because I, these are a little bit trickier. So I'm going to take this first two terms. I need to have the x squared have a 1. So I'm going to factor out a 2, and I'm left with x squared plus 3x. Now this one's definitely harder because that is not an even number. So I have to take half of that, half of 3 is 3 halves, and I'm going to square 3 halves. So I'm actually adding on 9 fourths. And then the 1 is hanging out. Okay, since I added on 9 fourths, I have to add on 9 fourths to this side right here. So this is what was being added on. Let me highlight that. All right, so I added on 9 fourths to make that a trinomial that I can factor. So I add on 9 fourths to this side. Same thing I did back here. I added on 4, so I have to add on 4. But it's not really 9 fourths. It's 2 times 9 fourths, so I have to also make sure I'm multiplying that by 2. All right. So that gives me, uh, let's cancel that 9 halves. So now this x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths is really x plus 3 halves times x plus 3 halves. Okay, so that's what it factors to. And then I have the, um, the plus 1. Now, I'm not going to write it as 1, though. Let me write it as 2 over 2. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I need to combine that. So all this, this is equivalent, what I just highlighted in orange. I need to combine it with the, the 9 halves over here. So I'm going to subtract 9 halves. So I'm going to go back and just write my y, 2x plus 3 halves squared. And now I'm subtracting 9 halves. So that gives me a negative 7 halves. So remember the 2 in front, that coefficient just makes it narrower or wider. So that's not doing anything. What's really going to give me my vertex are these numbers right here. So my vertex is going to be negative 3 halves because the horizontal change is the opposite sign. Negative 7 halves. So that's my vertex. All right. Uh, let's see, so the method of completing the square, if I was to take that and manipulate that around a little bit, okay, I really have x plus b over 2a squared minus b squared over 4a plus c. Based on this formula, what is the x-coordinate of the turning point of any parabola? Well, the x-coordinate of the turning point of any parabola in vertex form was this right here. Okay, so that's going to be negative b over 2a. Now that should seem really familiar because that was the equation of my axis of symmetry back when you learned this in algebra. All right, so using that formula, let's find the turning point of this parabola right here. So remember the number in front of the x squared is your a, that's 1. b is the number in front of your x, and c is negative 2. So using my formula, x equals negative b negative 10 over 2a. So that's negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5. Okay, so that's the x-coordinate. And then all I have to do is plug that back in to find the y. So I'm gonna, now that I know that x is negative 5, I'm going to plug that in. So I have negative 5 squared plus 10 times negative 5 minus 2. So that's 25 minus 50 minus 2 which gives me a negative 27. So my turning point is negative 5, negative 27. All right, they want us to verify my answer by placing it into vertex form. All right, so let's do that right here. So I have x squared plus 10x, and the negative 2 is just hanging on. Let me change color so you can see it a little bit more easily. So I'm completing the square. Half of 10 is 5, 
5 squared is 25. So I add on 25 to the right. I have to add on 25 to the left. This now factors to x plus 5 times x plus 5. So it's x plus 5 squared. And I have that 25 on this side, which needs to be brought over. So it's going to be y equals x plus 5 squared minus 27. So what's my vertex form? My vertex form gives me my turning point, which is negative 5, negative 27. The same thing that I had up there. And then if you wanted to, you could just use your calculator. So plug in this equation into your calculator. y equals x squared plus 10x minus 2. And look at the table. And if you look at your table for your x, y, um, you would see, like I have negative 6, negative 26, negative 5, negative 27, negative 4, negative 26. So you can see that that negative 5, negative 27 is my, um, is my turning point right there. Okay, and last one we'll try, we'll just do 5a. So I have the equation x equals negative b over 2a. I'm going to use that formula to find my turning point. So a is 2, b is negative 12, and c is 7. All right, so x equals negative b, so negative 12. Actually, it's a negative negative 12, all right, over um, 2a, 2 times 2. So that's just going to be 12 over 4, which is 3. And then to find your y-coordinate, I'm just going to plug in 3. So 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 7. So see how I'm substituting in 3 for x. So 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 12 times 3 is 36. And that would be my y-coordinate. So the turning point is 3, negative 11. Okay, so another way to do that besides completing the square. And we'll practice that tomorrow.